Hi, I'm Monica Bay. We're at the University of Florida, and we just concluded an amazing day. I think my head is going to explode with all the stuff we learned about e-discovery. And tell our audience a little bit about what you do. Sure. So as you said, my name is John Birchfield. Uh, I'm the Executive Vice President with DSI. DSI is a 15-year-old litigation support provider. We've been an e-discovery company now for about 12 years. We deal with the totality of all of the e-discovery services across the EDRM, some information governance, uh, primarily though dealing with everything from identification and collection of data through processing, hosting, and review of that technology primarily inside of hosted review platforms like Catalyst. Uh, we've I been was a Catalyst ask you, partner. You've been yeah. a partner with them for a while. That's one of our main connections and here. a really good party at Legal Tech. <laughs> that, the, the best party ever. That's right. Thank you, John Rich and the Catalyst team. Uh, so we've been uh, partners with Catalyst now for about eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been, I think, their leading partner now for three or four years. We've uh -huh. put uh, terabytes and terabytes of data in the platform. And we feel that the advents of the technology-assisted review platforms, particularly what we call continuous active learning, are one of the most exciting fields uh, for the legal community as we okay, deal with I'm this problem stop of big you data. Now because yeah. I want to get to the students. Sure. So, one of the things that's hard for students who are coming in new is that they're not really. Most of them are not really familiar with e-discovery. And I think there's still some stereotypes from the old days of being stuck, stuck in the, which I did, I worked on some <laughs> of those, uh, the contract lawyers doing review of documents and so forth and so on. How is, how is uh, uh, e-discovery changing now? What do you see coming down the road in the immediate year or two? Sure. Well, I, I think that the important message for law students is that the education and investment in learning the technology is going to be the most critical thing for the practice of law over the next several years. I agree with the, you. The mindset that you're describing, and, and we don't want to use the term Luddite, but, but the, <laughs> oh, I did. The, let's call it technology <laughs> adverse, uh, is sometimes hindering the practice of law. Yeah. And I think it's just so critical for the rising generation of new attorneys to really invest themselves in understanding what's happening with big data, yeah. social media, yeah. uh, the preponderance, just the massive amounts and volumes of electronic information that are being created, which if you don't know how to get your arms around them, uh, you will not be able to correctly practice law. What and do so you think is the biggest uh, mistake that lawyers make right now in terms of e-discovery? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I would say probably what we see the most common mistakes being made are on the front end of the process. Okay. Uh, where we don't have proper preservation of the data and we're not seeing proper collection of the data. So we're either over collecting, which drives up expense for a corporate client, or we're under collecting because we've used uh, some process like say search term calling on the front end. Yeah trying to reduce data, but we then wind up having to go back and recollect because we've not gotten everything that we need. I think also failing to understand how the newer technologies can help reduce the cost of review is an area that's often being missed. So we outsource large document reviews now to uh, contract attorneys, which is great, but there's still a higher cost to do that than what we could actually save using the technology that's available. And I think we're going to see an explosion with the Internet of Things and uh, so much social media is expanding and so forth and so on. Before I let you go, yes. I ask everybody this, what would you, advice would you give to the new 1Ls who are starting law school? Um, I would suggest that investing in this area of technology uh, in conjunction with your legal education is the most exciting part of law that you could get involved with. As we deal with what you just referenced, the Internet of Things, the explosion of big data, uh, what we call the exponential organizational phenomenon that's occurring, attorneys, young lawyers who invest the time to learn this will position themselves not just for what I think will be potentially some of the more lucrative careers, but some of the most exciting careers that will happen in law in the next 10 to 20 years. you layer in cybersecurity too, it gets yeah. even more interesting. Yeah, you, I mean, to the Internet of Things. Some of the most yeah. recent breaches have exactly. occurred through the Internet of Things, devices connected to networks where yeah. security breaches occurred. It's just a, it's a fascinating field for any young lawyer. Well, I think your advice is great, and thank you so much for being with us. Um, I'm Monica Bay, and thank you for watching.